how's everybody doing? It is a terrific Tuesday. I call it a terrific Tuesday because God made this day. He made Tuesday and I choose to rejoice in it. I choose to rejoice because God is good. It's another day's journey and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for it. On today I'm doing another video in the series Shell's Champions for Christ. I like to honor, pay tribute to a woman I met. She probably knew me before I knew myself <laughs> in, uh, as a child, and she greatly imparted to me. I will tell you more about her. If you'll stay with me, my name is Nichelle, and these are my notes. So, yes, I would like to honor on today, give an honor to whom honor is due. I'd like to honor a woman from my childhood. I knew her in the church, her name, Mother Vivian. Mother Vivian on today is still alive and well, and uh, she hails from the state of California, and she was the church pianist. She was the musician at the church my father pastored. I was a little girl and I always admired her. She had a beautiful, she still does, have, have has a beautiful singing voice. And she was one of those that imparted to me, and me and my sisters and other children as we grew up. And that is so very important. As a Christian, um, our Christian foundation, I know there are many that did not grow up in church or, or, or what have you. Um, and God has other ways of establishing your foundation. Uh, but I can only give my testimony. Uh, these are Nichelle's notes. So I'm just kind of, I'm just vlogging. I'm just uh, saying uh, what I went through going up, growing up. And, and I want to take the time to say thank you. So I remember on Sundays. On Sundays, every Sunday that I can remember during that particular time, Mother Vivian would bring munch bars. After church, she would pass munch bars, these candy bars, out to us. And and yes, and as I look back, you know, the little girl in me says, thank you so much. I love that. You know, all of us love that. I mean, it just, it just was a little sweet blessing and just showed, you know, that she was a sweetheart, that she thought about us and encouraged us in that way. I remember uh, times that we would sing, she would teach us certain songs and um, what a blessing that that was. Mother Vivian, one of the songs that I remember her singing was, and I could see her, I could hear her music, I could see her kind of rocking as she played the piano. And um, she, one of the songs she would sing that is dear to my heart is, Teach Me Lord, Teach Me Lord how to wait and um, that that song is dear to me even today there are times sometimes I'll hear myself humming it and I'll, I'll hear the music in the background as I think about that those are precious memories to me and um, I really want to mention this is really a highlight for me um, we had what you call YPWW YPWW what it stood for was young people willing workers young people willing workers and it and we would have it on Sunday nights um, on, on Sunday nights uh, around about 6 p.m. and what it was was a Bible study that geared toward um, training up us 12 and under t training us up not just 12 and under but it was it was um delegated it was uh designed to teach us young people at that particular time and um we i learned the bible drill from mother vivian the bible drill is a game set up it, it it's it's set up to be kind of competitive you know um you know it's a game and you know you're vying for the prize if there is one but um 
what it does is it helps you to learn where certain books of the Bible are. It helps you to learn your Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. Um, at the time, we did not have electronic devices that you can find, you know, you could just look it up just like that. You, can, you know, go to Google and find a Bible dictionary or find, you know, um, or a concordance or what have you. We had paper Bibles and this was our way of learning it. And so I can remember Mother Vivian teaching us how you take your Bible in your hand and she would say, carry your sword. And that meant you had your Bible, you put it at the, you held it at your side. Present your sword. That means you bring it up. You bring it up, you get it ready. Present your sword. And, you know, we're all standing next to each other and, you know, you know this is competitive and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna win. We're gonna find this scripture. And then she would say, find, and then you couldn't go yet, but she would say, find, let's say she said, Ecclesiastes 3 and 3, charge. And when she said charge, that meant find that scripture, find Ecclesiastes 3 and 3. And she has her finger on it, and she's waiting to see who's going to get it. And, you know, as soon as you find it, you start reading because you want to you want to get that scripture before anybody else. And um, there are times that, you know, in your excitement, you read, um, say, I read Esther <laughs> 3 and 3. I thought I had it, but I didn't. And so they'll say, no, nope, that's not it. You know, so if someone said, I got it, I got it, and they start reading and they didn't get it, the rest of them were to continue on because they may get it. And whoever got it, they got that point. And so, and then they went on and they uh, did other scriptures. And okay, fine, Revelation uh, 2 and 29, um, what have you. And, and you would do the same thing. But it was so, um, for me, it was so inspirational. It, it was educational. Uh, now, for someone who does not value Christianity, for someone who does not value the Bible or um, really care uh, about the books of the Bible or, or what have you, it may not mean anything, but this was a part of my foundation. This was a part of my learning. I was a child, and this, it also is such a great memory for me because this is, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus, and so th these things were important to me. On down the years, as a grown-up, there are times where, you know, say the preacher says, can you find for me this uh, this scripture and read for me? You have to, you know, they want you to be quick, and you have to be loud, and you have to speak clearly, and that's when you're reading for whoever is bringing the, the message or bringing the word, and those Bible drills helped me to be able to know my Bible. I remember when uh, Mother Vivian had handed out something to the effect of like a bookmark that would have, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth on it. And then in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, and she would send us home and say, okay, I want all of y'all to go home and memorize these Bible, uh, the books of the Bible. And we would go home and we did it. And when we would come back, you would get a prize. I remember them teaching, I want you to go home and learn the Lord's Prayer. And we learned, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And and, and many of y'all know them. And if you don't know them, it's okay. It's a perfect opportunity to learn them. And if you have children, if you have grandchildren, nieces or nephews, godchildren, um, teach them teach them. There are fun ways to do them. I understand that they now have electronic devices and so on and so forth, but um, I think it's really great when you can learn these things. I mean, they teach all of these other different things. Our children, if we're not careful, they learn uh, several lines of rap songs that talk about things they should not be talking about. Um, and such, if they can learn how to, they can program our phones, young people better than some of us older ones, uh, middle-aged ones can. Um, so they can learn, look up things, find different ways to inspire your children. Teach them the Bible stories. Teach them the Bible stories. It was um common for 
for me to understand about Noah's Ark and uh, David and Goliath and Jonah and the, the big fish and such. And I'm saying it's it's still important to know the, the um, great things that God did in the Bible through various characters in the Bible. Those are true to life accounts. And, um, and it should go right along with education. Teach them. Teach them. I'm not saying the same methods that I learned, the same methods or ways that we learn. They may be different ways now of teaching them certain things, different games and such. But um, do so. Do so. Teach them. I was in the Bible bookstore on the other day, and they have a, a, a Bible, a, I think it's Bibleopoly. Instead of Monopoly, it's, it's some sort of way they have the Bible ingrained in it. They have different uh, different board games and such uh, that help you learn, uh, that I guess correspond with the Bible. They have so many different types of ways that we can incorporate our Christianity and our Christian learning, our Bible learning in. And we as the parents, as the grandparents, as the aunties, as the godparents and such, we should um, find ways to do that because we are helping some child to have a foundation. The world is going to teach what they teach. The world, they're not even, they just, it's all around us. They, um, you got children that are uh, twerking children that are doing all sorts of things and the parents some some parents think it's funny they think it's cute and everything but what about us as christians let's let's rise up and and teach our children get you know inspire them uh teach them how to worship uh my granddaughter um i love i I'll, i love turning on uh it's a uh, holy spirit you are welcome here it's just it's, it's like my signature wake up song or before I go to bed, I'll turn the video on and I'll just wave my hands. And to me, it just helps to clear the atmosphere. I just welcome the Holy Spirit. And my granddaughter knows when that comes on Am I, and, and she'll wave her hands. I've taught her to wave her hands and that this is a time of worship. And she'll see that video and she'll do that. And then get, get this, my granddaughter has been diagnosed with hearing loss. So, um, According to the medical profession, I say that because I always leave room for God to go ahead and heal those ears and such. But according to the medical profession, she does not even hear. But at the same time, she recognizes when it's time to worship. But that's only because I teach her. I purposefully put the atmosphere around her. I, perp I know she's going to imitate me. And so I want her to imitate that we worship the Lord, that we worship the Lord. And out of the mouth of babes comes perfected praise. God knows her heart. God knows God made her. And, um, I, and I'm going to do every bit of what I can as a grandmother and, and whatever access I have to her to, uh, to train her up in the way that she should go to come alongside her mother and train her up in the way that she should go. And so I thank you, Mother Vivian, for uh, what you did, how you were there. You taught us um, the books of the Bible. I thank you for your love. I, I appreciate every time an opportunity I come in contact with you by Facebook. And when I am back in the state, I hope I'll be able to visit you. I thank you for helping uh, to uh, give me a firm foundation and helping me to learn these Bible things. Of course, I have not named everything that she has done <laughs> for me as a child and, and, and how what a blessing she has been to my family. But uh, thank you again. I just want to say thank you. I am recognizing you today as a Shell's champion for Christ. Shell's champion for Christ. So, my name is Nichelle, and these are my notes.